We want to talk about turning garbage into gold. Like as I said in the in the beginning of the show this morning, uh, it is said that one man's trash is another man's treasure. So hopefully you're the, on the treasure side of things as well uh, to earn something from it. But did you know that an estimated 60 billion kilos of textiles and footwear is lost? That's either burned or landfilled worldwide every year 60 billion kilos and kenya is importing more than 100 million kgs of mitumba every year but the question is what happens when it gets too old uh, to even reuse everything actually does end up in dumping sites including africa's largest one which shamedly is here in kenya dandora um, or the items are actually burnt in the open air which is of course terrible for our environment and even for human health and so there are two companies here in studio that have come together to reuse uh, such materials and help save us all the trouble and save our environment as well Karibuni sana to the show here with us i have mudoni kirumba who's the executive director of zola afrique great to have you here you. and also elma struma who's the founder or co-founder of act mm -hmm. which is africa collect textiles Karibuni sana to the show guys great to have you here thank you, thank you so much all right so let's begin with a quick introductions as far as what you guys actually do and uh, mudoni let's begin with you tell me a bit about zola afrique so zola afrique is a gift shop in nairobi cvd and we have a fashion sector because of course people uh it actually started as a fashion shop and you know the nature of business and entrepreneurship you have to diversify mm -hmm. so we got into gifting and uh, the fashion side is now the, the, the part that I came to think of as much as you're doing business and I encourage many people to add a cost to their business because it's not just about bottom lines. Mm -hmm. That's where I went and uh, uh, found ACT and I found how can we do as much as fashion is beautiful. How can we start the conversation of sustainable fashion mm -hmm. and not only starting it but putting it into action. Okay. Right. So what exactly does sustainable fashion actually mean? Because I think most consumers, they're not thinking about that. They just want to look good and slay as they go about their day. Yeah. So it's like what you're saying. And it's small bits that you're talking about. And these global conversations of going green. And for this particular one, you're talking about a circular economy. I will wear a dress. It will look nice. But where is the dress going to? It's going to mess the environment. Okay. If it messes the environment, it affects you, me, our children, everyone. So that is not sustainable. Mm -hmm. It means at some point we'll be sick. We won't be able to enjoy that fashion. Mm -hmm. So that's the sustainability we are talking about. Okay. And when I met ACT, they begin to teach me about a linear and a circular economy. Okay. A linear economy is I will wear my dress. I will throw it to the environment. I don't care about that. But a circular economy means that I'm able to recycle it, put it back into the environment, into something more useful, more beautiful. And it means that I'm not only caring about looking good, mm -hmm. I'm caring about breathing fresh air. I'm caring about my environment. So as I'm strolling, uh, strolling uh, along the streets, it's not just about looking good. It's about sustainability, not only for me, but our own children, our future generation. All right. Yeah. Well, Elma, um, let's come to you and you can tell us a bit about ACT. She's touched on a bit of what you do and she's talk, talked about training and actually educating people on sustainable fashion. Yeah. So tell us a bit about your work. Well, what we do is we uh, basically collect uh, used textiles. So um, a lot of people have um, clothing or footwear they don't use anymore and uh, they can be of use for someone else mm -hmm. or maybe for another product. So we, uh, we have a collection network of, of collection points where people can drop off uh, used clothing and footwear. Okay. And it can be wearable, it can be not wearable, it does, doesn't matter so much, but we basically um, provide a service for people to drop clothing um, anonymously, but also like without any hassle thinking about who should wear it or like what are the sizes and what mm -hmm. who, who would it fit. And also at the same time, there are a lot of people that don't have proper uh, clothing or they, they don't have the means to, to, to buy clothing. And um, so they need to be uh, our clothing. Uh, the wearable items are distributed yeah. to uh, people that need it, um, like uh, orphanages, elderly homes. Uh, handicapped people so they need proper clothing and right. uh, so they don't have always access to it yeah. and they need the right size also. Yeah. So what we do is basically collect 
everything. So okay. um, and make sure that wearable items can be worn again, mm -hmm. and other items that are broken or ripped, um, they we recycle them as as good as possible. Okay. And, um, so, for example, um, wool and acrylic can be re recycled into blankets. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and denim we recycle into carpets. Oh, interesting. And we'll be getting onto this in just a moment. But that actually raises a question for me as far as even as we're thinking about sustainable fashion, does it that mean does it then mean that everything can be recycled or are there certain fabrics that maybe someone who is being conscious about being sustainably fashionable should sort of steer away from maybe certain fabrics? Does it come to that point or are we at a point where yeah. almost everything can be recycled? No, it, absolutely not. Like most garments are not made to, to be, be recycled. recycled exactly. And that is a big, big problem for us. Like if everything would be, if the designer at, in the first stages and where it is made in Asia, whatever, uh, if they would think about like how would it be discarded? Where does it end up? Um, how can people at the end of the chain um, recycle it in the best way, mm -hmm. then maybe clothing would look different. So a lot of uh, textiles, they are made of uh, different materials, uh, mixed uh, polyester with a cotton, for example. Yeah. And that is uh, basically um, polluting the materials itself. Yeah. So if everything would be 100% cotton or 100% polyester, it's, it's already uh, easier to recycle. You can adjust your your recycling processes to that. Mm -hmm. So if we are going to a more circular fashion industry, then we also have to start at the beginning. But it, we also we do our part sort of at the end. So we you need also have a, an infrastructure to sure. collect everything. All right. But also the people in the beginning, the fashion designers, have to think about how can uh, clothing be uh, last long and how can it be recycled in, in, and have a second life. Right. Absolutely. Okay, well, um, so Mudoni, now you run a gift shop, Zola yeah. Freak, yeah. and uh, I'm assuming that some of the items that we're seeing here are things that we could possibly find at your shop. Absolutely. Okay, so tell us about this, this bag, and actually there's a smaller one of it, thankfully mm -hmm. I've remembered, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there's this as well, um, and these are super cute. I have my shopping bags that are, are in this fabric, you yes, know, for going to do groceries. Yeah. Yes, yes, jute. Um, tell us about uh, these designs here. So what happened is when we were partnering with uh, ACT, I talked to my partners and we began to think green because it's all about mindset. For you to come and think about this, it has to start with a mindset. Mm -hmm. I had to look at my shop and think, wow, we don't have any products that are actually eco-friendly. So these are some of the products that we incorporated. Okay. That's the jute bag. Okay. This is a jute bag as well, but with, um, with an African touch to make okay. it beautiful. It can be branded, we use it, all of these actually corporate products. Mm -hmm. And then this is a multi-purpose office holder made of waste material, the red okay. one. Okay. And inside there are pens. Yeah. There are pens which are bamboo and cork. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, they're made from bamboo and cork. So all of them are eco-friendly. I might thug one by the time <laughs> it's over. <laughs> <We'll turn. laughs> so, oh, this is the cork one. Yes, that's the cork one, the one wow, that is usually like in the wines. And all these products, they do not hurt the environment. Okay. So I began, we began to think also as Zola Afrique. We are partnering with a company that is so much into sustainability. At the moment, the company Zola Afrique did not have the products that were eco-friendly. So we begin to incorporate, to incorporate them. And these are the first ones. And these are actually... Uh, in our corporate range okay. so it means that also when you're speaking to corporates we are sensitizing them okay. that this when you pick these products you're not only picking products you're picking green products and that means that they will be able to sensitize their companies okay because so now it's like making it a movement All not right. just yeah let's talk about mm. this carpet um so this this is denim yeah yeah wow so basically, these are discarded denim, so uh, you cannot wear it anymore as as, as a jeans. Okay. Um, and we, um, yeah, we created different designs uh, for for carpets, and it's it's extremely sturdy. Mm -hmm. So this is made out of like maybe between ten and and, and twenty uh, uh, jeans that wow. we collect uh, with our system. Okay. So um, yeah, we work with uh, different weavers, and um, so we try to also support them uh, with our program mm -hmm. um, and create jobs um, within their, their facilities. Right. 
Yeah, obviously, uh, that's that's definitely having some trickle down effects into the the market, being able to provide employment, and I guess that's the whole purpose of an ecosystem like this, right? Yeah. Because as you're saying, it the circular effect is that it, there's a point around that circle yeah. uh, that affects everybody from a corporate to a weaver in a village somewhere to a shop owner to yeah. you know uh, a, a, an organization else who are actually doing the logistical work of collecting these items so very interesting tell me a bit about the actual process then because maybe someone is sitting at home saying like hey yeah i have all these clothes i've not been wearing mm. i've not been sure what to do with them the first step, of course, would be to donate them to those who don't have any, especially if they're in still good condition that someone can wear. Yeah. But after that, what do I do with my stuff if it's not maybe in great condition? Well, like Africa Collect Textiles uh, accepts uh, both wearable and non-wearable items. Okay. Um, I think many people, and we calculated also in Nairobi, a lot, like there's a lot of uh, like textiles sitting somewhere in, mm. in people's closets and people don't know where to break, uh, bring them or are waiting a little bit for an opportunity to, to, yes, to that, create that, that shirt <laughs> might be suitable for that person but yeah. like what is the time and when I'm when will I give it to that person and yeah. where, if it, is it still good enough and so it is a bit of a, a challenge for people so and we we calculated that a lot of people uh, have a lot of textile waste or use textiles or items that they don't wear anymore it's had it, it doesn't fit anymore it is out of style or the kids have grown out of it mm. um, and many people are si just sitting on these these items and um, so we are making it easy basically how to redistribute it uh, how to make sure that these items end up in the best possible place okay so um, we make sure that uh, yeah, underprivileged groups uh, will receive items in the right size mm -hmm. uh, so like kids items go to an orphanage and elderly stuff goes yeah. to, an, to an elderly place yeah because that is also sometimes a challenge like yeah. you can just uh, not randomly mm -hmm. give items to random people right. yeah. <laughs> yeah so uh, <laughs> please don't give a uh, six-year-old clothes to a, a 13 year old and then say yeah. i've donated yeah. <laughs> no, exactly. so so like do it you know <laughs> genuinely and from a good place yeah, yeah so the the, the sorting process and uh, and redistribution of those clothing is is, uh, is quite a challenge sure. right? you have so many different items and so many different materials we need to we need to see uh, every item what is what is the value of it or like if it is still uh, wearable or is it, does it have a stain is it still washable can it be repaired mm. uh, things like that so it is a bit uh, like this this structure in, in the uh, sorting is quite it's uh, quite a task yeah it's quite a task okay so yeah and so we, we make sure that wearable items can be worn and recyclable items we call it uh, yeah, that still have a value to uh, to be recycled uh, and then we we do the best the way we can so, so then we have some yeah. solutions and wool and acrylic we yeah. uh, we can uh, it can be processed into blankets okay so that it's also uh, like uh, for example th these things are only interesting when the volumes are very high like mm. if you would give me a broken sweater with a with a, that is ripped a sweater that is uh, has a hole in it. Yes, has a hole. Then that that particular sweater is basically yeah, useless. Eh? You cannot do much with it. Maybe use it as a cleaning cloth. But if you would have uh, a container or a thousand kilos yeah. of broken sweaters, right. then it becomes interesting to process into something else. So it is a, a bit of a like an economy of scale kind of thing. Okay. Uh, so you need to have large volumes yeah. in order to make the industry interested to to taking up certain uh, waste streams okay. because nobody's going to adjust their processes based on one sweater sure but and i mean as you said this already and it's not the biggest carpet but this already has you said 15 to 20 